In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, dreams and vision shattered, you're all broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. In case your situation has turned upside down, and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again
It has always been a prayer of mine from back many, many years ago. And um, I, I, from what I have been told by other uh, preachers of the gospel, if they have sons, that they ask God for at least one of the sons somebody to follow in their footsteps and that has always been one of my prayers but after and and this is not um, derogatory toward them but after they got grown and I realized that it looked like that wasn't God's will then I stopped asking the Lord I stopped requesting that prayer so I just said, well, Lord, you know, whatever you want to do, you do it. And I was thinking about that verse of Scripture in Psalm 33, 11, where it says, the counsel of God stands forever, and the plans of his heart to all generations. And sometimes God does strange things, so he jumped over my sons to my grandson. And you know what? It doesn't matter, just as long as God has his way, you know. And I'm learning with the few days I have left here on earth that uh, God's will is going to be done in regardless. And it doesn't matter about how I feel or what I think about it because he knows what's best for my life. This morning, I want to introduce, and not present, but introduce uh, to each of us my grandson and um, he has been speaking for at least a year he was licensed in his other grandfather's church and uh, soon he'll be going back uh, with his mother his uh, father he has him during the summer for two months and then he goes back to his mother in August to get ready for school I'd never heard him preach and when he first told me that the Lord had called him, I'm just going to be candid with you, I was skeptical. I was doubtful. And then I started thinking about what Jeremiah, what God told Jeremiah in that first chapter. Jeremiah said that I'm a child and I can't do this. And God said, don't say you're a child. If I call you and if I send you, I will equip you and I will go with you. So it's not mine to question, but just to thank God and to praise him. His name is Akio Barna. supposed to do this I was supposed to have been professional in introducing him uh, but when there's a certain kinship and bonding that touches your soul then um, there's something that evokes God's praise I don't know how God is going to use him this morning. He um, called me up yesterday and he said, uh, I told him, I said, now before, before Sunday, I want to go over the message with you and try to help you in terms of structuring your message. So uh, he called me up and he told me what his thought was, the scripture and everything. So. I told him, I said, one of those scriptures, just delete it, cancel it, and get rid of it because that does not really pertain. It's not germane to your thoughts. And then I told him in terms of how to structure it, but the rest of it is in God's hands through him. 
So I'm going to ask that you would receive a kill barter with an open heart and with a receptive spirit and with a gracious mind. I didn't tell him how long to stand up here because I never tell a preacher how long to preach. That's in the hands of God. This is, uh, like he said, I've been preaching for a little bit, not that long. You know, I haven't been preaching as long as my grandfather has, but uh, uh, the funny thing is that I know this is not the Holy Spirit, but when I was first preaching, and uh, we'll get on the message, but when I, when I was first preaching, I was leery. I was like, God, how do I know I'm called to preach? And he showed me Jeremiah, and I never read, and I, for myself, I never read the book of Jeremiah. And so I went to Jeremiah, and exact same words that he, he said to you. And I was reading, and I was like, Jeremiah was a young man just like me. Probably even younger, but, you know, he was he was a young man, and, uh, and he was nervous on the faces, and like I am, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I am, still am, you know, but as, you know, years went by, I, well, I've been preaching for actually a little bit, two years, because I was preaching when I was 14, but... But God has given me, uh, he, like he said, he's given me the tools. And, and quickly, I don't, you know, hoop and holler and, you know, do with my granddad and do all that stuff like that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I just give you, I'm going to give you what God has given me and placed on my heart. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, and I, before I get into the message, I first I want to, give reverence first to God and who's uh, above my life and um, I thank God for my grandfather who is my pastor and all the ministers and even the deacons and my parents who have had to teach me and my aunties and uncles everybody who's helped me uh, because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for one for God and if it wasn't for them raising me in the way I am today so uh, thank God for that uh, so uh, you have to the scriptures up on the, the monitor because I'm about to start reading and I'll tell you all oh, real quick before we do this you know I don't know if you all watch your old steam but my uh, pastor when I go over my mother's house we do this every time and I don't know if you have a bible or your phone but uh, just repeat after me this is my bible I am what it says I am I have what it says I am I have I could do what it says I could do Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, will you all turn with me today and have patience? I'm not going to be long with you. I'm not uh, the, one of those old school Baptist preachers who preach for like two hours. And I just get straight on with the point and I just just give it. <laughs> I digress. I digress. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be coming from John chapter 8, and I believe, uh, I actually, I'll tell you all later after we get on into the message, I'll tell you later on the message, uh, John chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 7, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to start at verse 1 through 9, I'm sorry, I changed it, I wrote, I kept it in my notes, I should change it. John chapter 8. Yeah, no, J. John chapter 8. <laughs> John chapter 8, verse 1 through 9. And it says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people were coming to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, and having set her in the midst. Actually, I'm reading from, I think, a different verse. I don't know if I'm not sure. Uh, in verse 4, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. Now the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? 
and they were saying this, testing him in order, to, in order that they might, might have ground for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. And when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. And, and again he stooped down and rolled on the ground. And when they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone, and the woman where she was in the midst. Uh, all right, and we're going to stop right there. And I got some scriptures later on, so keep the Bible out for later on. Uh, and I want to uh, use for a thought. Humility is one of the keys to the kingdom. All right. So I, uh, as I was going to say earlier, uh, I asked God, I was like, God, what do you want me to to speak to your people? Because I don't want to give them what I feel or how my emotions are telling them, but give me something that you want me to speak to them about and something I need to work on myself too because I'm just a messenger. I'm not the one who put this, I'm really put this together. It was God, I believe, who gave me this message. So he said, well, everybody needs some, a little bit of humility in their life. I need some, I know I need some be really big time in my life so you know and I just hope that this will this message will help you to try to become a better Christian a better person so uh, um, I'm gonna give you the definition uh, and definition of humility is not proud or arrogant modest although successful and then our godly meaning of humility is an act of obedience to God putting God's will before yours uh, and then we're going to break down the word also key. A key, well, the definition of a key, a tool or an object used to unlock another object or a door. So those are the definitions. I just like to give you that just for, you know, food for thought. So uh, now let me let me go a little deeper into this. Uh, uh, explain this, what, what this really is saying. Now, the scribes and the Pharisees, as we know, they weren't humble. And they what they did was... As I said in, I think, was it verse 6, they were trying to test him, to tempt him, to try to trip him up to do wrong. What they did was they were uh, the type of people. Now, they were like, in our days, they were like, uh, you know, like up today, I'm, I'm just going to compare it to us. They were like pastors and ministers like that. We're just going to say like that. That's what we're going to compare them to so you all can understand. Um, and they were, you know, they were the, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, they were basically the big dogs, as we, we're gonna say that. They were the big dogs. And when they walked around, everybody everybody had a type of, when I say fear of respect for them, they had the type of authority as they walked around. They tried to portray themselves as they were something better than what they were. They were trying to portray themselves like they didn't do no wrong, that they were perfect. And they what they did was they point the finger at everybody else. And they seen this man this man named Jesus, who was hopefully our Lord and Savior, they seen this man who was uh, who was upright and who was he was obeying the law, but he was also explaining them because they were using it to their own benefit. They were using it because hey, you know, uh, they want to make themselves look better than what the other person is. In the scripture in Luke six and thirty seven, real quick, if you want to go, if you you don't have to go to, I'll just read it for you. Uh, you don't have to put it on the screen, but I, hopefully I'm loud enough. But uh, Luke 6 and 37, it says, And do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. And I must, instead of saying pardon, I must say forgive. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. So they didn't, you know, well, this is the, the New Testament, but they didn't understand. And I'm sure there was laws about this. But what they did was they used the law to try to trip Jesus up. Because if they knew, if he would have said something out, they could, you know, uh, accuse him of doing something that he didn't or, you know, try to, you know, just make him look worse and make them look better. And so what Jesus did now, him are, we call ourselves Christians, which means being Christ-like, being uh, like Christ, doing what he does and doing what he did, acting like him, walking like him, talking like him. Those are the things that that's what a Christian is supposed to do. So uh, what Jesus did was all he did was sit there humble and roll in the sand. And he said, now this, this 
what this statement was powerful enough for them just to, they didn't really have to say nothing, but he didn't really have to, because since he was Jesus, he knew their thoughts. He knew their intentions was. He didn't have to, he didn't have to say, oh, uh, I'm, I'm just going to make up a name, oh, because uh, they had some weird name, Jebediah, whatever. You, uh, I remember last week when you was looking at that woman, and I, I remember what you did when you walked past her. Yeah, I seen you. I know. I'm God. Yeah, I know. that. he could have said something like that, but he said, point based in a way secretly point out what they you know point out their uh false uh, he said he said uh let he that was without sin cast the first stone and that basically exposed the pharisees and the scribes sins it basically yeah, showed them yeah. that you know you're not perfect there's only one good and perfect and it's god he wanted to show them that yeah we're all human we're going to make mistakes but instead of trying to, when he told people, he said, Peter, when thou art strong, strengthen thy brother. Instead of doing that, they try to accuse, you know, try to accuse, you know, and they try to find people, find people who are doing wrong, and they try to find their faults. Yeah, yeah. And instead of, you know, like I said, instead of trying to help them out, that's what their whole intentions were. So that's all Jesus had to say. He said, let he that was without sin cast the first stone. They ain't say nothing. They just... It was like an awe moment, like, I can't believe this guy just actually just said this. They dropped their stones, and it says from the, uh, what does it say, the elderly, from the oldest, like we're going to say the oldest to the youngest, they walked off. And he told her, he said, he, he said, any of them hurt you, didn't they do anything? He said, don't, he, he asked, whenever he, whenever Jesus, when he was doing a miracle, when he helped somebody, he always tell them, go sin no more. That don't mean that they weren't going to sin, you know, completely no more because we're, we're human. We're going to do sin whether we know it or not. But he was trying to tell them to do right. Don't do this. Learn from your mistakes. Don't keep uh, acting this way because if you're proclaiming to be a Christian and somebody who's not, and you keep doing the same thing over and over again, what do you think they're going to say in their head? Well, if I'm going to heaven, I, uh, if they're going to heaven, I'm, I must be going to heaven because I ain't doing as bad as they are what they're doing right now. So we have to stop pointing the finger at people because the thing is that you have to realize that the one perfect man in the world, now people like to say, and, and this is, I believe, what God has revealed to me. People say he didn't have to die on the cross. He didn't have to do it for you. But in a way, he did because the scripture, he had to fulfill the scripture. He had to, because that's what the scripture said. So he, you know, God had, didn't have to do this. Now I'm saying God the father he didn't have to send his son but because he loved us yeah, yeah. he sent his son for us for to die for us now as you we could uh, well I don't have this I, I could find it but I we don't have time right now just like I said I'm almost done with my message but uh, but God but God he has uh, given us a son now we when you if you've done research of what they have done to Jesus punched him in his face spit on him make fun of him and this is the man who created the universe who just spoke a word and just say let there be and yeah. there it was he, he he created the waters you know the little molecules little atoms every little thing that you see he created the the, the hair he, he you know i heard a saying that he, he he can number the hairs on your head and i'm like well i got a lot you know my hair grows fast so i got a lot of hair my sister's got a lot how can he do that but god that's who god is oh, he could yeah. do that that man with that much power, now if he wasn't humble, he could have easily sent down, uh, I don't know, I think was it 12 legions or I don't know how many angels, yeah, 12 yeah. legions of angels and destroyed the whole world. That easily, that easily, but he, but he allowed his son to go through. And, uh, but also I just, before I get into the closing, because I said I ain't taking long, I'll tell you what, this is what God has given me to help me out too. And I'm going to tell you what the opposite of being humble is you have pride. Now, pride we talked. Uh, well, I don't know if you have uh, talked about, but pride. Well, the first sin or the first fall was because of pride, because of Satan. Now, because he wanted the position of God. Now, how are you, the creation, going to go to the Creator? Is going to ask or, aid or tell him, "Give me your position." You must be crazy. So it's like me trying to go up to my daddy and say, I'm the daddy now, and you the son, and me smacking him. No, that's, no, no, no. You see how, 
So it's, you know, you see how big, you know, see how small I am, how big he is, and all that's not about to happen. The same thing with Satan, you know, he, but it's all in God's plan. But so pride, and that's the opposite of, of humility. Arrogant, people poke, uh, uh, poking their chest out, bigger than what they are thinking that they're, now it's nothing wrong with being bold in Christ and being uh, proud to be a Christian, yeah. but when you think that you're better than everybody and you forget what you've done last week or what you what you was looking at last night, you when you forget all that stuff, then there's a problem. Then that's become error. Then the, the other thing is selfishness. Selfishness. You don't care about what everybody else wants. You care about me, my, myself, and I. You care about those. You don't care about nobody else. You don't care about how people feel. You don't care how people think. Or what, I mean, it doesn't really matter what people think because people, they're going to talk about your whole life, but I'm just saying how they feel and treating them. And then the other thing is, like, I already uh, addressed, point the finger at others. And that's a problem, you know, I have to pray to God to help me with, too, because I have, I have, when I, uh, talk to somebody, I say, well, what about what they did? And, and I'm keeping, uh, as my father would say, score and points of what they did. And me forgetting that it was a man who died for me for what he forgave me, my sins of what I've done in the past yeah, and what I will yeah. do. Yeah. He forgave me of those, and I can't forgive That's them of the simple little thing that they have done to me. Even though he died for people who hated him, who didn't like him. He died yeah. for people who were supposed to be the Christians of that, that today. He died for them. People who gave him up, he died for all of us. So, uh, and I'm going to give you all the resolution, and I'm almost, like I said, I'm almost finished. Uh, it's in Romans 10 and 9. You go there real quick. and I, it's, it's a familiar passage, but I'm just going to read it how it is, because I don't want to quote the scripture. Uh, I don't want to take bits and pieces out. I just want to quote it. I'm going to just say how it is. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus as, as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is the first step. In order to get humility, you can't, I mean, you, you can be humble, but you can have that godly humility, being obedient to the will of God, That's which means is putting God's will before your will. Ask him, yeah. God, like, like, I, like I was, I was asking God to help me with, God, help me, you know, give me what the words to say to your people. These are not my people. These are not my words, Lord. You give me the words to say. That's what we should do, not just when we're preaching or talking to some, you know, yeah, how we yeah. live in our daily lives. We should, uh, I forgot the, forget the one scripture uh, talking about uh, how we should uh, uh, acknowledge him in all our ways, you know. Yeah. You know. So, right, he would direct our path. We need to acknowledge God and first be safe. And then Matthew 6, 33 said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. So first seek God. Like I just said, seek God. And if you want humility, if you want love, if you want kindness, if you want, if you want, now it could be also material things, but sometimes, you know, we don't need material things because it goes to our head. But um, what I was saying, but... We have to seek God in everything that we do. We have to put him first in everything. Other thing is pray about, about it if we want humility in our life. And when we get humility, this is not, and when we, let me, let me rephrase it like this. When we act in humility towards God, he will give us things like love. He will give us, uh, when we're obedient, he will give us a kindness. Yeah. He will, when people, your enemies, when they're doing, when doing wrong, he'll make them your footstool. He'll, 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 he'll heal your sickness, your diseases, whatever you're going through, your problems, your situations, if your mental problems. Uh, so things like that, God will, if, you know, but you have to be humble towards his will. Put him first. So, and then the last thing I want to give, I'm going to turn over to the hands of uh, my great well, my pastor. I'm going to say, I ain't going to say grandfather because I'm going to respect his re position. But it says, but the last thing I want to give you is follow God's word. This is a problem I have too because uh, we all, I, I believe that as a time we can read God's word more. We give God more time. We watch TV, play video games, do everything before, go to the nail salon. I ain't going to forget y'all ladies. Go to the nail salon, get our hair done and stuff like that, you know. 
And uh, we do things like that. And we don't give God his time. He's given us life. He's given us a amount of time to do all that, the rest of that stuff later. But what time have we put aside to give to God? That's right. What time That's have right. we uh, sat there and prayed to God? Um, so, like I said, read your word because this is the only way God could talk to me. Now, I'm sorry, I'd be scared almost halfway to death if I heard God said, kill. And, you know, I, I, I'll be like, what the world? You know, I'd probably be looking around and say, Daddy, can go. I, I promise, I think this one time, I'm about to close out, I'm just going to tell y'all something, this story. But one time, uh, I was doing my business. I ain't going to tell you what I was doing, but I was doing my business. And uh, I heard someone say, kill. I was like, I said, kill. I said, Lord, is it, is it you? Kill. So hold on, let me go ask my, my, uh, my, uh, I was I was over my mother's house. Let me go ask my dad. I said, Dad, did you call me? No. I said, I just heard somebody call me. He said, Next time, say what? What did I, what did I say? Lord, here I am. Uh, Sit, yeah, your servant here. I'm like, Is it really you, God? But you know, I, I, that's that's just that. I was scared. It scared the mess out of me. Almost peed in my pants. I didn't know what the world was. But uh, but I'm I'm gonna leave you with this though. But I'm gonna leave you with this. Humility is one of the keys of the kingdom. So be humble in everything you do. When somebody does wrong to you, sometimes you have to walk away. Sometimes, now that doesn't mean you're a punk or anything like that. It just means that you're trying to do, or we would say be the bigger person. Be a, a, a Christian and show them, you know, the Bible says, let our light so shine so that men can see your good works and glorify God. Not us, but God. So. I'm just going to leave that with you, and uh, I, I thank God for this. Like I said, thank God for this opportunity to him allowing me to preach. I told you, I don't preach long. I just, the most I preached was, was it? oh, never mind, I take it back. I preached for 30 minutes my first sermon because I was so nervous. I just kept talking. But uh, I thank God for this opportunity, and I'm going to turn it over to the hands of uh, Pastor Bob.